Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. This is the uh, virtual graduation for the Leader Development Program Class of 2020. My name is Eddie Gonzalez. I'm the program manager on SAME staff that has the pleasure of uh, working with this group to manage the program. Before we get started, I do have some intro reminders for everyone. First, please make sure you mute your phone so we can cut down on the background noise. I am able to mute them for you if you forget, but uh, just uh, please track your, your microphones. And then uh, we ask that you turn your web cameras off unless you're speaking or part of the graduating class so we can limit the amount of cameras that are uh, being shown. You do have the option through the control panel to control whose cameras you're viewing. So you can either switch from view speaker or view active cameras or view everyone. Uh, so take a second to find those yeah. controls and you can change how you're viewing who is participating. Also during the presentations, uh, feel free to add commentary through the chats uh, box through the chat feature. Uh, you'll see it lit up right now because there's two comments in it. Uh, we'll be sharing the chat with the graduates and with all the attendees. So this is a great place to uh, memorialize your comments to the class. And then uh, we'll have a space for you to uh, volunteer for toast when we get to the uh, open toast section. Uh, that we will be having toast. So remember to have a beverage on hand for that portion. This program is being recorded. So just be uh, mindful that uh, we will be posting this uh, after the event, as well as the slides uh, everything will be posted on the leader development COI page. With that, I'm going to turn it over to your host, Angie Martinez, who's marketing and communications vice chair for the leader development community of interest. Take it away, Angie. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we're all pretty psyched about this, so uh, you have to pardon the enthusiasm, but this is this is a big day for those for um, you guys who have made it through this program and for those of us that, um, you know, have been wishing for this day and hoping for it for a long time. Um, I'm just gonna start out right now by just introducing um, General Joe Schradell, who's our Executive Director of SAME and has been a gigantic supporter and um, helper from everything down into the nitty gritty of this program um, and everything in between. So uh, Joe, we couldn't do it without you. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you. No, thanks Angie, I'm humbled. So. Yeah, we're going to do a little test here out front. So we're going to start this this great program the way we start everything we do in the SME with the Pledge of Allegiance. And yes, I'm fully clothed, so I'm going to stand up and, and we're going to do it right. And I've got a flag behind me too. So if you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, I'd appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic stands one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thanks. Thanks for the flag on the screen too, Eddie. So first of all, thanks, th a tremendous thanks to the to the team, the LDP team, the C the task force that is now a COI. Uh, wow. All I can say is, wow, you guys have done incredible, incredible work. Thanks to the foundation for your support, incredible. You know, going back to John Mogi's leadership and the whole team, coming together to underwrite this program and get the second class started on. And mostly congratulations to the class. You know, as I thought about today's event, obviously I was a little bummed by the fact that we're not, it wasn't JETC on the stage, thousands of people, uh, the magnetism in the air with Joe Galloway and, and just tons of leaders of this society together to witness the first graduation. I mean, I personally think that if that had happened, I think the magnetism in that room in Washington, D.C. would have shifted the entire magnetic field of, of the earth. I really do. I think it would have been that powerful. But, but as I thought about, you know, what, what's the importance of this program? Two words came to my mind, just, just two. The first word was gift. You think about the leaders who have been a part of this organization for 100 years now, I think I can best describe, and you would understand what I mean by the gift of leadership that this society has given to our nation and to our profession. Names like Bacchus, Martinez, Wozni, Lupia, Flowers, Van Antwerp, Nash, Luce, 
Yulberg, many of them still active, still helping us. And the second word that came to my mind is the word column. This is where today's class, the first class of this second century of this great organization, this is where, and, and the best way I could describe what's the importance of calling and what I mean by calling. Well, I'm talking about national leadership of this organization. Today, to be a national leader of this organization, it's at least a three-year commitment to be the president-elect, president, past president. I can probably best describe what I mean by calling by mentioning names like Makita, Mogi, Penny, Engel, Blunt, Najomian, Fisher, and Wishard Smith. What a commitment, what a calling. So as, as we begin tonight's dignified ceremony, and it's gonna be a little bit of fun too, obviously. Uh, you know, I'd like the class to kind of think about the importance of what you've done in the first year, but more importantly, the importance of what you're gonna do going forward. And, and I know that you know this, that the opportunity that you were given this first year would not have been possible without the unbelievable and incredible dedication of the team of people that made it happen. So my thanks again and heartfelt thanks to everyone who's worked their hearts out. Mike, Caroline, Angie, the whole team, Jimmy. I, I could go on and on. It's amazing. So this society is gonna continue to build on that tremendous gift of leadership for our nation, our profession. And we're gonna do it because people like those graduating today will answer the call to lead. Well, God bless all of you and let's get this party started. Thanks. Well, all right, next, I think, um, thank you, Joe, for your remarks. We appreciate all your support. Really, 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 Joe, Joe helps with everything. Um, yes. Next up, I think, is Caroline and Mike. Caroline, you here? Yes, thank you, Angie. So I'm Caroline Roberts. I'm co-chair of the LDP task force and chair of the leader development community of interest. So I want to welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We've got a lot to celebrate. So a few of those celebrations. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate and celebrate the 17 individuals who are graduating today. These folks have prioritized their desire for leadership training. They made it known. They jumped through application hoops and internal approval processes with their own organizations and government agencies to have the chance to participate. And they invested the time and the effort uh, into themselves to learn, to stretch, and to grow. So we're here to celebrate you. Thank you. I also want to celebrate their mentors, um, the investment of your time and your attention and your guidance is directly related to their successes and we appreciate uh, and thank you for giving back. Um, I also wanna celebrate the foundation. Uh, thank you for embracing Mike and I uh, and allowing us to contribute to your vision of fostering engineering, engineering leadership for the nation. We are grateful for this. I also want to celebrate SAME. This is a big step for us. This is the inaugural leader development class, and I want to thank the society. We are in a very unique position to leverage leaders from all across the society. So industry, active duty, military, retired military professionals um, for their lessons learned, their guidance, and their wisdom. Um, thank you to the members and everyone who has given your time, your perspective, um, contributed in any way to the content of the program and to these 17 individuals. Um, and it's because of you and your investment in these leaders and the value and the impact that they've already made um, and will continue to make that the future of SAME is very bright. Uh, and to the graduates, um, it's our hope uh, that when you're faced with tackling challenges of the world, that you remember what you learned here about yourself, uh, and it allows you to lead from your strengths while staying true to your values, um, having courage to take action when necessary, um, focus on the culture that you want to cultivate, 
and the self-awareness to know that even when the going gets tough, that every new challenge is an opportunity for leadership and innovation to create new and unheard of solutions that we all depend on. You guys far exceeded my expectations. I am grateful to know you. Uh, I have personally learned a ton from you. So thank you for that. I'm proud of you. I'm a proud of your accomplishments over the last year. And I cannot wait to see what you guys choose to tackle next. Um, so thank you, SAME LDP class of 2020. And congratulations on your graduation. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Mike. Uh, Darrow, my co-chair. Uh, thanks, Caroline. Uh, it was always tough to follow you and, and Joe, uh, but wow, uh, today's a great day. It's not quite what, what we envisioned, but a great opportunity to close out what uh, for Caroline and I and others has been over two and a half years of hard work by a large group of folks. So to the first, F, first ever SAME LDB class, congratulations. It's really been great working with you the last year. Uh, I too learned a lot and really inspired by you all exceeding our expectations. Uh, I personally started working this effort with Caroline uh, and Lisa Tolley in January 2018. Uh, we started running with some guidance from the November 2017 National Board meeting to establish a national LDP program to support the run to 2020. Uh, we began a weekly Friday call to start to develop the program and slowly built a team one by one, uh, and, but we really just started to gain momentum after our first briefing to the foundation in March of 2018. Uh, so first, uh, let's give a, a virtual round of applause and thanks to the, the to John Mogi and the foundation board. Uh, I'm gonna my hand. It's truly, without their support, uh, I mean, this program would not be a reality. Uh, during that March 18 meeting, Carol and I presented a concept, a kind of plan, a timeline, and the only feedback we got uh, was, I think from General Lupia that said, hey, your budget's too low, you need to ask for more money, we're all in, we want to make this a world-class uh, program, and it's been like that ever since. Uh, so, I mean, thanks for the support. And at that meeting, we gained two immediate members of the task force, so we doubled our size from Caroline and myself. We gained Angie Gorl and Su Su Susan Thames jumped right on. And then we then just added new members one by one as we went along. Jimmy Blake, Patrick Hogaboom, Charlie Hart, Mike Nosvich, Eric Wilbur, Roland de Guzman, and Amelia de Cruz. Uh, thanks to all you for your dedication and, and, and passion. We have truly become friends uh, working a project of passion these last two years. Uh, during this last, uh, this last year with you all, we, ex we executed the vision. We gained monthly input from all of you and then we Appreciate your candid input. Us, we were goofed up, needed to fix something and put something in place, and we tried to do that as soon as can as we could. Uh, and we've actually, with those on the fly improvements, added those to this coming class to make it better. So again, thanks for your input to the, the class to, to really make and grow on our experiences. I would like to thank the post presidents and the RVPs who provided us world class candidates through a post driven selection process. Uh, also key to our initial successes and, and support were Marv Fisher and Buddy Barnes, and we served as the national presidents and provided unwavering support uh, to the task force as we moved through this first year. Uh, finally, on behalf of the LDP task force and the class, I want to thank Eddie Gonzalez from the national staff. Eddie has been on board almost the entire two and a half years and really has done all the heavy lifting and support to make all the moving pieces and of behind the scenes work and make really things seem seamless to us all. Uh, goes from scheduling the, the scheduling, the IT support, your certificates, hopefully your great big huge gold pins and even smaller ones that you received in the mail this week, uh, and synchronization with our efforts with the national staff. Uh, unbelievable support and, 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 and I've got emails from Eddie at midnight, one o'clock in the morning on LDP stuff just to make sure stuff happens. So Eddie, from all of us, Thank you. Um, this program has been a team effort, and I'm grateful to have been part of it uh, from the start and, and really see the changes that went on throughout the year and really great to say thanks to this first class. I mean, you guys have been knocked my socks off. So thanks to you all. And now it's actually my pleasure to introduce 
our keynote speaker, Lieutenant, John, Lieutenant General Todd Seminite, 54th Chief of Engineers. As you all know, General Seminite has been a longtime supporter of SAME, actively involved um, throughout his 30 plus year career in the Army, and actually one time a regional vice president. I've had the privilege of working closely with General Seminite the last 13 years, and have just experienced his passion, high energy, and dedication firsthand, and particularly to SAME, and, in, and most recently, in trying to improve USAID's involvement in, in the organization in our relationships with industry. As we all know, General Seminite is an extremely busy individual and pulled in multiple directions. Unfortunately, this week has been no different. He has had two significant conflicts uh, that required a whole re-juggling and shuffling of the schedule, uh, which has resulted in, in a virtual presentation from him today. Having said that, I mean, he was able to schedule his virtual presentation and taping into a window yesterday afternoon before he went over to the White House to talk to the president on border wall issues. Uh, that, so, I mean, just goes to show, he wanted to make this happen and just couldn't find the, the time today afternoon he's with the chief of staff of the army and the other army leaders when the four-star boss told him he had to be there I mean, he couldn't break away uh, but T general seminite has been fully committed to having this opportunity to address the, the first graduating class of the, of, of the same ldp he's truly dedicated to building future leaders in the aec industry it is my pleasure to be able to roll the film and introduce the general lieutenant general seminites address to the graduating class so eddie over to you Hello, I'm Lieutenant General Todd Seminite, 54th Chief of Engineers and the Commanding General of the United States Army Corps of Engineers. And I'm really excited to talk to you today a little bit about this experience you're going through and to be able to congratulate you on graduating from this very, very important program. I want to first of all thank Joe Schrodell and the leaders that uh, envisioned uh, how to set up a leader development program and you as the inaugural class, uh, really it's, uh, it's something that I think SAME found a very, very good void to step into here and it's a chance for all of you to be able to continue to work on your skills. Uh, you were selected for this program, handpicked, and I know that you put a lot of you know, um, sweat and, uh, and uh, effort into this over the last uh, year. So I, it's too bad that we have to do this in a COVID compliant environment. It was my goal to be with all of you in May at the uh, convention and to be able to do this in person. But it is something that uh, I wanted to take the time to talk to you about a couple of things. And today I'm very honored to be with a whole slate of very distinguished people. I'll just hit a couple. Uh, Heather Wishard Smith, uh, Mike Darrow, who's obviously uh, uh, the coordinator for the LDP program. Buddy Barnes, a past president, and uh, has done a phenomenal job last year. Uh, John Mogi, uh, past chair of the foundation board. Carolyn Roberts, Charlie Hart, Jackie Hacker, just to name a few. What I want to do is I want to take about 15 minutes, and I want to talk to you about four different things. And I could have gone on and on with different types of uh, leadership vignettes and all the rest, but I know you're a little bit limited on time. I want to, first of all, talk to you about how important it is as a leader to be able to set the values of your organization and set the culture. I think everything can come from culture, and I just kind of want to walk you through that, how, I, how I've done that for the last 20 years of my career in a 41-year career. I want to talk to you about vision, but more importantly, vision implementation and the importance of a leader having a long-term strategic goal and then every day committing the time and the resources to be able to achieve that, that vision. The third thing is, I think, the importance of developing yourself. You as a leader have a lot of great attributes, but you've got to figure out how you can get better and continue to be able to build on your strengths and to be able to make sure you're addressing your weaknesses. And finally, about communication. What is uh, uh, the importance of communicating as a senior leader? And I'll give you a couple examples of, uh, of how I've done that and, uh, and how important that it really is. So the first slide I really want to show you is talking about Army values. Uh, not all of you are in the Army, obviously. A couple of you are, a couple in the reserves. We've got, obviously, some active duty people. But you're in different services or you're completely into an independent organization. So how does your organization, your company, set the values? What are the expectations for everybody to do? So in the Army, you'll see on the slide here, we have seven Army values. If you actually look at the first letter, 
of all seven, it spells out the word leadership. And that means that regardless of what we do every day with the programmatics, I'll talk a little bit about more about that, but it goes back to everybody's watching you. And I don't want you to follow the values because you're afraid so you're going to get caught doing something wrong. You have to live these. You have to internalize those values. And wherever you're at, whatever the level of your performance and the level of your job is, uh, it's incumbent to do something. I went to West Point. We had a saying up there that discipline is all about doing the right thing when no one's looking. It's not about only doing things when people are looking, but how do you make sure you're setting those values out there? And I'm going to build on the word foundation in my next couple of slides here, but this goes back to who are you as a person? What are your values? And when things are going great, it's probably relatively easy to be able to follow all the rules. But when you're in a tough situation and your boss or a political leader, if you're in the military, is giving you guidance that is counter to what you know is the right way to do things, do you have the candor and the physical dexterity to be able to stand there and professionally be able to say, hey, here's where I can go, here's where I can't go, and I'm going to be able to make sure that my values every single day are driving me the right direction. <clears throat> the next big thing I want to talk about is vision. And so this is a slide I built in June of 2000. I was a brigade commander, for those that might not know. Uh, that's a colonel, and I had probably about 3,000 people to work for me. And what I found is that every single day in a lot of the organizations, people came in, they went to a job, they did their job all day long, and after a year, two years, they walked back out the door. And to look at the, uh, the colors on here, um, when you think about this particular graphic, I kind of broke this in two. Uh, the green, which is the bottom of this temple, is kind of things that are just going to sustain uh, the organization. You turn the lights on, you do your job, you do the projects, everything kind of runs, uh, everybody gets paid, you make a modest amount of profit, and the organization is doing a relatively good job. But the mark of a really great leader is one who can aspire the organization to go to a newer level, a higher level. And then how do you somehow focus all of your people and all of your, your skills and your resources to achieve that vision. So this is a very simple one. I talked about the foundation. You look at the three bottom steps of the foundation in this graphic I did. Army values and taking care of people. People are the most important part of your organization. It's not the project. If you hire the best people and you encourage the best people and you delegate and you train them, your people will make your organization a better place but it's incumbent upon you to be able to make sure that that's all values-based. You've got to have regulations or some type of rules and policies and standards. When I came into the Corps, we had a lot of red tape. How do we make sure we don't have too many rules and we're able to continue to delegate down so people can execute? And then on this one, because I was an Army Brigade, I wanted to train, but it goes back to how do you make sure that day-to-day -day you're doing what you need to do? And if you just come into an organization for two years and only do the regular normal stuff, I say that you're basically an average leader. You're not a great leader. So on this particular one, I set a vision, and it's the top of that pyramid. It was to be the best brigade in the Army. And it doesn't, you don't need to know anything about, about the Army, but there are many, many different brigades. I wanted my command to be the best engineer brigade out of about 17 engineer brigades out there. I wanted to be better at training, better at logistics, better at maintenance, and all the way across the board. And then how do you get them to inspire to be able to find a way of getting to be the best. Those seven different particular pillars there are the parts of a brigade you got to do. You got to lead the brigade, care, sustain, war fight, maintain, command, and train. But then I made an assessment of my brigade and where the strengths were, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats, a SWAT assessment early on within the first three or four weeks. And I broke them into those seven different functional lanes to say, if we're going to be better, then here are the, the goals and objectives in every one of those different pillars to get there. I wanted my logistics guys to be better than the engineer brigade at Fort Bragg. So I set out the metrics of how they're going to do that. And then at some point, when you think of governance, we have a lot of meetings of how we run things. But the most important meeting I had every single week was my vision meeting. And it's great to have a chart like this that hangs on the wall. You probably all have them in your organization that said the vision of this is to be able to do great things. But who's actually taking the time to review the goals and objectives? Who's investing? Every single thing that I have in any of my visions, I always have a list of 
what do I need to do for buying to purchase things? We're down at the end of the year right now, so I'm looking at year-end money. Do I need to buy more IT capability? Do I need to buy more people? How do I do this so do I invest? A vision has to be something you invest your time in and your money in to be able to find out how you can do it. We did very, very well, but at some point, it's where you everybody knew coming to work every single day that the vision of my brigade was to be the best. And as long as no matter what your functional lane is, if you know that's the requirement, then I don't have to tell you what best looks like. You figure out what it looks like because you're the expert in engineering or in logistics or in financial management. I just want you to be the best. So I want you to kind of remember what that graphic looks like. And I'm going to walk you to another graphic that I did in June of 2016. 16 years later, I'm commanding the Corps of Engineers a $68 billion organization. If you were to put us on the Fortune 500, we're about 87 today, and we have 36,000 employees. But look at the vision that I have here and really the philosophy. It goes back to where is your vision as a leader? You might have four people in your office that you're in charge of. You might have 40. But at the end of the day, if you're just there taking stuff from the inbox to the outbox, and all you're doing is just rubber stamping what you think you need to do for your job, you're not doing the true things that leaders need to do. So this is a little different, but look at the foundation. I use a castle, it's our symbol in the Corps of Engineers. A castle in Germany, if you were to think of a castle, it's extremely heavy. So a castle has to be built on an unbelievably solid foundation, so we'll never have cracks in the foundation. I, I equate cracks in a foundation to when we are not taking care of people. I have perhaps an acquisition failure, something goes wrong with a contract. I have protests. I have people that are not happy with where they want to go. We're very heavy in the core in best places to work. I hold my leaders accountable to be able to make sure we're doing our surveys right and then we're following back up for it because taking care of people is a very, very important thing. You look at down there again, it goes back to do we have the right systems? Have we streamlined? Have we delegated? And if, in fact, there's ever a crack in the foundation, I would, I would surmise that that crack is going to go right up through the middle of that building at some point. And it goes back to the most important thing you do, like in the core, is to deliver the program. If you're in a company or a military organization, you've got to accomplish the mission. But if you don't have a solid foundation, then you're never going to be able to get the mission done. The second big part of my uh, graphic here is to deliver the program. You've got to come through. You as an engineer have to be able to build at or ahead of schedule, at or below cost, and, on, and you've got to build quality. Quality is non-negotiable in the Corps of Engineers. You've got to articulate that to every single person in your organization and fight to be able to make sure that we're getting quality products out on the street. And then right under where it says May 16 there, you see the vision. The vision of the Corps of Engineers is to engineer solutions for the nation's toughest challenges. That's what I expect my organization to do. So the leaders have to, the third step is to achieve that vision. Where do we want to go five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road? And then how do we make sure that we're violently executing the vision every single day? Lining through tasks, accomplishing what we need to do, making the right investment, holding people accountable. It goes back to this three different layers, strengthen the foundation, deliver the program, and achieve the vision. And by working at both the tactical, the strategic level, you're able to get an organization that is much, much better at the end of the day. I want to talk a little bit about developing yourself. Uh, this next slide, I was in this job. I'd been in the Army about uh, uh, 35 years, and an opportunity came up to go to Afghanistan to be able to actually lead the Afghan police and the Afghan Army. I had never been to Afghanistan. I've been to Iraq. But um, it was a job where we had a two-star assassinated, uh, and so I volunteered to go in. I'm not sure I really knew uh, exactly all the things I had to do, but I was very passionate about the, me the uh, mission in Afghanistan, and I knew that if I had the best people around me and we had a good vision, we could end up building a very, very strong Afghan force. We did that, but at the time, the, some of the best jobs you're going to um, learn from are the jobs that might be the scariest to go into. So where are you taking that leap of faith to try to ask for that next promotion, compete for the next job, leave your family for two or three months, go to another job site, and to, to continue to deliver uh, those, those uh, on, your, on your attributes and, uh, and to be able to strengthen up uh, those things that make you good. We normally only reinforce our strengths. Very few people actually solve our weaknesses. So how good are you at being able to figure out 
where are where are your strengths maybe you can continue to make those better but where are there some things that you need to do to be able to get much much better and to be able to take care of your weaknesses um, that leads right into the next area I want to talk and that's a little bit about communication okay if you're a leader that can't communicate well and be able to articulate with your people both your superiors your subordinates and your peers and to be able to get your message across then you got to work on that okay I talk too fast I know that but they only gave me 15 minutes and I'm already at 14 minutes the bottom line is you've got to be able to make sure that you're you understand where your organization is you understand who to talk to to be able to make the organization better you understand how to counsel and mentor people and as much as uh, it's awful easy to find uh, fault with organizations what are you doing to be the champion out there to pat people on the back you as a leader have to come to work every day no matter how bad the day might be you gotta walk in and the, the glass has to be half full you have to be able to walk around and say boy we have a great organization here just attitude alone energy excitement passion passion is one of my my most exciting words to use you've got to have a passion about making your organization a better place I drive to work fast every day I want to get to work I have a lot to do and you've got to be able to somehow be able to communicate how can you get all that done and not be an email leader not be somebody who's just doing paper but get out see people do meetings and continue to be able to make sure that the organization knows where you want them to go <clears throat> I'm going to end with a challenge to all of you and I know that you probably had Mike Darrell probably has been walking you through uh, how to be better throughout the whole year this is one I wrote down and actually wrote an article in it so I'm going to read you one paragraph just in case you can't see the screen here but my challenge to all emerging great leaders and all of our engineers this nation needs America's engineers not just to do what we're asked but to be more aggressive in creating innovative strategies that solve today's complex problems. The vision of the Corps is to engineer solutions for the nation's toughest challenges. We apply our world-class professional skills, committed employees, and most importantly, an unending quest to make America a better place. We are government employees. Some of you are not, but it goes back to the same thing. What are you doing to make your company better? What are you doing to try to figure out how to make uh, the public uh, wealth better? What are you doing to help uh, solve some of our big challenges out there? Right now, I'm, I'm frustrated to a degree with where America is when it comes to we're bifurcated. We've got to continue to go back and bring America back together, but we have challenges in the economy right now. We're going to have challenges in the environment, mother nature, natural disasters, and engineers have the ability to do an awful lot of things that can be able to pull parts together. I use some strong words here. Lean forward, anticipate, use innovation, uh, figure out how you can continue to be able to make uh, uh, your organization better. We are inherently problem solvers. Engineers think and they break, they break things down into very logical um, thought streams that then you can tackle and you can work your way apart. So a lot of times the one who starts out as a technical engineer will end up going into management and leadership jobs because we're very, very good at finding creative solutions. And that's what I would continue to do. I'm very honored to have been in the Corps for 41 years. I'm very, very proud of everything you've done. But I would tell you is, uh, as we wrap this up, uh, step it up, Take a, go to a higher notch. Uh, I use the word ruthless. I don't use the word ruthless with respect to the law, always follow the law. I don't use it with respect to treating people with dignity and respect. That's a no-brainer. You've got to do that. But the red tape will almost always slow you down. And when somebody thinks that uh, you think you're going to get something done in two or three days and it takes two or three weeks, it because at some point you didn't follow up, you didn't have your team know that you were willing to personally get engaged to be able to make something happen. So uh, I think that the engineers have an awful lot we can offer this country. Your companies or your um, military service organizations have a lot to do. And I would just tell you to say, be more aggressive in getting things done. So in closing, this is a slide of some of the things that the Corps has done. 245 years we've been around. And you see some of the big, uh, big things that we've built here. I would tell you that, uh, and this is a good line you ought to remember, that while we have projects, and projects are going to come and go, uh, we build an awful lot with concrete and steel. But the most important thing that engineer leaders need to be doing is building partnerships and relationships. Because at the end of the day, I can hire technical capability. I can go out on the street and hire almost anything I need to run an organization. 
What I can't hire is somebody who understands the vision, understands how to achieve the vision, has the values and the ethic and the passion to be able to fight through the bureaucracy to make it happen. And it all goes back to this ability to be able to be willing to step out, willing to take well-informed risk. If you commit, if you screw up on something, as long as it's not something that's life safety, you know, leaders look for people who are subordinates that are willing to take risk. And that's where I want to reinforce success and continue to keep uh, to letting my guys know, I got your back. Uh, I'm the leader. I'm the one accountable. But go forth and do great things. So with that, I just tell you, congratulations on a great uh, first year. I know all of you are going to go on to do great things. If there's anything I can personally do for you, but from the Corps of Engineers, from the Department of the Army, the Department of Defense, and the engineer community, we need people like you to continue to step up, make things happen, and I always end with continue to say, we're Army strong, we're building strong, and for Todd Seminite, I'm going to be finishing strong. All right. Wow. So attitude, energy, and passion. I'm pretty sure General Seminite's got all those covered. <laughs> so thank you, Mike and Caroline and Joe, for your introductory remarks. And um, yeah, always hard to follow General Seminite, but uh, yeah, awesome, awesome words. I love the part about like fighting bureaucracy and red tape because uh, I hate when people tell me that something's always been done a certain way. So that was that was really cool for me personally. Uh, anyway, uh, our next part of our program here is we're going to have three members of our class who are going to share some of their perspectives. Um, we have Angela, Sean, and Melissa, and so um, they're going to share some of their perspectives from the year. So, Angela Gomez, representing our South Region, Southwest Region. Sorry, we will start with you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you to everyone for joining our graduation celebration. On behalf of the SAME Leader Development Program Class of 2020, we'd like to say thank you to everyone that has made an investment in us by not only devoting their time, but also numerous effort into each one of us. So we do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Everyone involved has brought so much inspiration and dedication, which has made this experience incredibly memorable. Every aspect of the program has brought its own special touch from the facilitators to the participants. We are all blessed to be part of that something that has lasted, will be long lasting and unforgettable. The LDP program has impacted me in so many ways. I now find myself asking so many questions. These questions not only impact professional life, but personal life as well. These observations have been influenced by my mentor, of course, our facilitators, the numerous speakers that we've had, our book leaders, our support personnel, and our curriculum, and of course, all of our lucky participants. So thank you so much for your dedication and support. At this time, we all need to ask ourselves, where is the balance between satisfied and fulfilled? And do we know the difference? We, the class of 2020, are extremely fortunate for this program and all the beautiful people it has brought into our lives. It has truly inspired and guided us, and I know that we have come out stronger for it. We are ready to keep learning and growing from this experience. The SAME, Leader Development Program has provided us some exceptional tools and skills to not only make us better leaders, but also better people. Thank you, SAME. While this is not how I anticipated the completion of the inaugural class of the Leadership Development Program, it has been an amazing experience and I'm very grateful to have been selected. Over the past year, we have fo fo followed the three themes of the program. Know yourself, know your team, and know your future. We start with knowing yourself through self-assessments. <laughs> and in-person uh, classroom sessions at Jetsy in 2019. In -person. Uh, during this session, uh, we had the opportunity to focus on better understanding ourselves as well as getting to know our other participants. While we discussed our own strengths and weaknesses, it also gave us a level of comfort needed to share our thoughts, past experiences, and perspectives through the di digital sessions throughout the year. Through our reading assignments, such as 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, 
uh, know your teams, and how to win friends and influence people. We not only develop better understanding of our own teams and concepts to strengthen them, but we're able to apply those same concepts to ongoing projects. Through the readings and discussions, we gain better perspectives of the needs of our partners. And we were able to foster team-based approaches and create collaborative work environments. And for me, one of the most fulfilling parts of the program was utilization project, which focused on knowing your future. I was lucky enough to be mentored by Admiral Dean Vanderlei. We looked at the challenge issued by the National Defense Strategy, which was how to succeed in the emergency, emerging security environment to outthink, outmaneuver, and outinnovate our adversaries. Admiral Vanderlei and I co-authored the article, Leveraging Efficiency to Increase Resiliency, in the March edition of TME, which looked at how we can better leverage existing energy programs to balance energy savings with resiliency improvements. Working on this article provided me the opportunity to perform research outside of my standard area of focus, develop development of regional same relationships, and foster future partnership opportunities that I never would have been exposed to without the leadership development program. To wrap up, I'd especially like to thank the program co-chairs, Mike Darrell and Caroline Roberts, for all their time and efforts in creating this program. I continue to utilize the skills and lessons learned over the past year daily and look forward to my continued engagement with Sammy and my fellow LD peers as we move forward into the future. Thank you all very much for the time. Congratulations, class of 2020. It's been a journey and it's been a pleasure with being with you all throughout this year. We've had a, a lot of um, memories we've made from WhatsApp app that we use, the uh, first trip to Jetsy with all of us and meeting everyone, our projects that we worked on, and several side jokes and laughters, many of the laughters that our uh, classmates. Um, one of the greatest things um, many of us have taken from this program is the mentorship. Not only from my mentor, Joan, but also from Joe, Eddie, Caroline, Angie, and Mike. In the beginning of this program, I asked myself, what's a mentor? What should I be doing with one? And what do I want out of this? I'm sure many of you have the same questions. The definition of mentorship is a relationship in which more experienced or more knowledgeable person, Joan, helps guide a less experienced or less knowledgeable person. That's me, I'm that person. So we dove right into this, like many of you did. We discussed books, life, my career, my future, and um, what all of that, and where I wanted to go with it. A mentor is someone who allows you to see hope inside yourself. This was a quote I pulled from uh, Oprah Winfrey. Joan did this, and as a mentor, she dove in with me and said, let's do this, not just, you go do this. She guided me in life through this crazy COVID-19 life, my career. She helped set up calls with professionals, meet and greets, lunches. We discussed numerous things over emails, um, letters, texting. And without all of this, I couldn't have taken the steps I took to make a few leaps in my career. So as LDP graduates, I challenge you to become a mentor. Show that you care. Now, you don't know how you don't have to know all the answers to be a mentor. You don't know how you don't have to know the square footage of the White House. You don't have to know how to prevent a base from floating away. But what you know and care about the person and what you share with them is the most important thing. So look ahead at your future, look for your replacement to mentor as we all move together in greater positions within SAME. Thanks again, congratulations class of 2020. Thank you so much, Angela, uh, Sean and Melissa. You guys are so awesome. I have to say, like, when we started talking about all this in the beginning, a lot of our conversations were, you're really nervous that, like, nobody would talk and nobody would say anything and we would do these webinars and it would be silent and, like, never, never a problem. Like, you guys always 
they wanted more. Like we thought we were going to give them too much to do and they wanted like more. So it was fantastic. So you guys are so awesome. Love your perspectives. Um, next up, we're going to have Colonel um, Patrick Hogaboom. And Patrick is their evaluations vice chair. So he's been collecting a bunch of data. Um, and he's going to kind of share some program retrospective of the, about the last year. Patrick. Hey, thanks, Angie. You know, in my other role of SAME, I'm, I serve as the Atlanta Post Scholarship Committee Chair. Uh, there I had the privilege to see the society invest in the next generation. But with this leader development program, the society takes leader development and, you know, goes even further with it. So what we're doing with this evaluation uh, is, uh, you know, evaluating the success of the program. We want to, because uh, we know leader development is important to the society to ensure the program is meeting its goals, achieving and the intended impacts and providing a return on investment. You know, the LDP evaluation is, is continuous. It's gonna require demographic, quantitative and qualitative measures to determine the LDP's participants' professional growth and the program's impact on society, the society. Through the process of the leader development community of interest, and uh, we will continue to optimize the program, improve the linkage to the 2025 SAME Strategic Plan's five goals, and evaluate the program's overall influence and impact. You know, it has been a privilege to serve the LDP Task Force supporting LDP program, and I'm pleased to share some observations on the inaugural SAME LDP class today. So on, uh, on the slide two, or on that slide, I guess whatever it is, Eddie, the uh, SAME Leader Development Program consisted of 120 hours of curriculum. The course began with a facilitated session at JETC 2019. It included self-assessments and opportunity to interact with each other. The class also met at uh, Small Business Conference 2019 and held a virtual session during JETC 2020. You know, throughout the year, the class read four books, participated in online uh, class discussions, attended monthly webinars, uh, completed a utilization project, and was supported by a mentor. To gain a little better understanding of how the class felt about the program, we asked each participant to answer a 132-question survey. Arg! You know, I will share some observations from the survey results. You know, throughout the presentation, you're going to see some examples of utilization projects and also some unattributed quotes uh, from the class. And yet, it's what you see here on this screen. You know, Zach Payne's project included the development of this in the course survey that I'm going over right now. The utilization projects are adding value and they enhance the body of knowledge for the society. Next slide, please. You know, so the class was a majority men, more men than women. 54% uh, of the class was between the ages of 35 and 39. 46% of the class held at least a master's degree, and another 46% came from the private sector, 46% came from the public sector, and about 8% came from public sector non-DOD. Uh, also displayed is the breakdown of the class by race uh, and military service. You know, 61% of the pro of the class was project managers. 31% of the, will identify themselves as engineers, and about 8% are involved in marketing or business development. You know, although the inaugural class came from the 17 regions within SAME as well as the international committee, the class consensus is the program would benefit from more diversity of race, gender, curriculum, and even thought. Uh, also, one to plug Sean's uh, Sean LaBelle's article that highlighted the benefits of Guantanamo Bay energy savings, as he just mentioned. Uh, and, and, you know, again, he co-authored co that with his mentor, Rear Admiral Den Benderley. Thank you, Sean, for sharing your experience. Next slide, please. You know, so continuing on with the class highlights, you know, 77% of the class is very active in their primary post. You know, three of whom have already been or are currently post presidents. 84% uh, of, the, of the class agree uh, that, the, that the program provided the knowledge and skills to be better prepared to think strategically. I think we just received a session here a few minutes ago, which I wrote a lot of notes for from uh, one of my mentors, General Seminite. However, 90% of the class would uh, consider that know yourself, that one of those three program themes was the most important. It was more important to understand their weaknesses over their strengths. So the entire class felt that the program delivers the knowledge and skills necessary to help better uh, form relationships, teams, and partnerships. Uh, next slide, please. So the entire class felt the program prepared them to better understand the mission, vision, and challenges of partnering with agencies and stakeholders. Uh, the, the SAME communities of interest um, that, that, most, that were most important to the class are the ones that are highlighted here on this slide. 
so K through 12 STEM was the most important, followed by leader development, young professionals, and notice that's no longer called young member for those that you've been around a while. Uh, college outreach and engineering and construction camps were the, the top five areas of interest for this class. Participants see themselves serving as a mentor, serving on LDP task force or COI, and leading book discussions for future LDP classes. And I think you already heard that from, uh, from, the, from the three uh, graduates who just spoke. Next slide, please. So a, uni a unique aspect of the program was, again, the inclusion of utilization projects. The projects address leadership, mentoring, establishing new student or field chapters. And I'm even looking forward to learning more about this SAME in a box as, as, uh, as someone who's been active with SAME even while deployed. And we've had some examples of that in this program as well. Next slide, please. So several members of the class you know, worked on, S on an SAME camps app for the extremely popular SAME summer camp program. All the projects were overseen by the LDP task force. That includes those that weren't just the camps. And uh, all of them were briefed to the SAME executive director. Uh, so I appreciate, uh, the, again, Eddie and uh, General Shordell for taking the time to, to listen. I mean, again, a lot of time and investment from uh, SAME into this program. So as a parent of two sons who have now participated in in-person and the virtual SME camps as a camper and even a junior mentor, I appreciate the efforts that are made by, by these individuals that are listed here to improve the camp experience. Next slide, please. So I have a few slides left, but I'm going to go um, finish up here with uh, a couple of sustains and improve. i got to go back to my slide here. There you go. Um, so overall, the, the class on the sustains, overall the class felt the program hit the mark. You know, here are just three program areas to sustain. There's, there's a few more, but assessments, webinars, projects, uh, you know, well on track. So next slide, please. As we talk about opportunities for improvement, we talked about increasing diversity, introducing new books. Uh, I, I do want to point out last year's books were Good to Great, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, how to win friends and influence people, and start with why. So if you haven't read those, and I haven't read all of them, um, please do. However, if you want to follow along with the next year's book, 2020 to 2021, good to great, make sure you have it. I've got mine right here. Five functions, dysfunctions of a team, crucial conversations, and then the book, Quiet, the Power of Introverts in a World That Won't Stop Talking. Uh, again, the, this year's class did recommend that the books do get freshened and, and refreshed every year, so I appreciate that. Only one book stayed the same, and that was good to great. And the final thing on here I want to point out is led by Eric Wilbur, the LDP COI is leading the charge supporting posts who are looking to develop their own leader development program. Currently, we were only aware of San Antonio and I think Washington, D.C., which is a combination with Northern Virginia Post as having their own uh, program. So. A uh, lot of opportunities within the society for those, especially those who applied, who weren't able to get into this national program. Next slide, please. So 100% of the class felt the program supports the development of the next generation of world-class military, government, civilian, industry leaders for the society and the nation. That's what we were going for. Thanks to the entire LDP task force, the leader development community of interest, the national staff, and of course, led by Mike Darrow and Caroline Roberts, pictured on the slide, it was run well as expected. It achieved the program requirements and the program uh, provides value to not only the membership, but the society and our future. As I wrap this up, here is one more quote about the future from a member of the graduating class. I think the LDP is an excellent program that is meeting the need in our community. As the program continues to develop and evolve, it will pay dividends to participants, the society, and organizations across the architectural, engineering, and construction community. So congratulations, class of 2020. We are proud of you and look forward to supporting your efforts as you go off and do great things. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Um, and thank you guys so much for all the work you put in on the survey. I know we had, we made you ask a lot of questions, but you know, like you're the first class and we're trying to learn how to make it better. So, you know, it's part of the, what you have to do, but we appreciate it. You guys gave a lot of feedback and um, it's going to help make this program better. And then you guys are already jumping in and helping the next program. So uh, they're just going to keep getting better and better. Um, our next part we're going to do is we've got some video segments from the class. So we've got um, just a couple comments here from four of your classmates and uh, Eddie, you can roll, roll the video. Hi, I'm Angela Gomez from sunny Arizona, and I'd like to thank SAME 
and its community for the valuable time and effort the LDP program has bestowed upon me. SAME has a dominating leadership family that has taken time to spread a wealth of knowledge to not only inspire, but to help shape us, the LDP emerging leaders. Here are some words of wisdom. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Mother Teresa, thank you, SAME. Hey, it's Brennan Maestas here from the inaugural LDP class. Um, just telling you, I had a, had a fantastic time in the class. Um, I was deployed for a good portion of it, um, but I was still able to make the meetings and do the work. Um, and I, I got a lot of value in just seeing so many different uh, opinions from different people with way different experience and, than I have. You know, normally I, I interact with uh, other CGOs in the Air Force, um, but through LDP, you know, I got to um, pick the brain, see the, the opinions, see the best practices, learn about leadership things from the other services, uh, as well as civilians. Um, so, tremendous opportunity, and I'm honored to have represented my region. Hello, all. My name is Erin Krug, and I represent the Minneapolis St. Paul Post from the inaugural SAME LDP class. I always seemed to have an LDP assignment due while I was traveling, so a funny story I have from this year is driving through the desert from Moab, Utah to Las Vegas, Nevada to catch a flight. My rental car had overheated an hour into my seven hour drive. And after letting the car cool off for about an hour, I drove the last six hours of my trip with the heat on and the windows down on the highway, blasting 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. So, good times. I just found out about a deadline for an engineering project, and everything is due today. No one has done any scope yet. I've been on this since 5 a.m. this morning. Then our middle son woke up with a fever and he can't go to daycare. And my little one is being extra clingy. My husband's gone on an Air Force assignment and isn't able to lend a hand. Some days, I don't think I can do it. There's no way I can get this all done. I need some help. Oh, Melissa, good thing you're part of the SAME Leadership Development Program. I'm here to support you as your mentor. You know, you don't have to do everything all at once or even alone. As one of my great mentors once told me, no matter how small an act of kindness or generosity or positivity you put out in the world, it will make a difference. You've got this, Melissa. Thanks to my mentor, I've got some perspective. I can get this project going in the right direction if I just give it to one of my staff to do the calculations. As for my sick boy, I'll give him some Tylenol and water and let him rest. He'll be feeling better in no time. And my little one just needs a big hug, as we all do sometimes. I realize now that I am stronger than I believed, and I have more powers than I ever knew. Awesome. You guys are so much fun. Uh, if y'all aren't following Melissa on TikTok, you should. So, you know, and we can get you some more followers going on there. <laughs> great job, great job. Um, always fun, like that's their thing. I mean, every everything we've done with this class has been like with a, a good attitude and um, yeah, just lots of, lots of support and lots of fun. So appreciate you guys putting this together and getting that all in and helping us add, add some more perspectives from you guys. Um, so coming up next is now it's finally time to have happy hour and it's exactly five o'clock. So like that worked out really well. Um, so everybody, you can like, you have to go fill your glass or pour or whatever you got to do. Um, you know, if you didn't run out and do it during seminite speech, you can do it now. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have, here's how this is going to work. We think. This is what we always think is going to, we never know what's actually going to happen. But what we, what we think is going to happen is that these folks are going to give some official toast to you guys. And then we would like to open it up to um, any of y'all. So especially the current class or the 2021 class, if you guys are on and would like to say anything, we would love to hear from you um, or anybody else on um, the phone as well. So probably the easiest way, easiest way to do it is going to be to type in the chat that you'd like to say something. And then Eddie and I are gonna kind of watch it and call on you. Um, or maybe we'll just say, turn on your mic. I don't know, we'll see how that works. So um, with that, we are gonna start with um, with Joe Shredell, our biggest cheerleader once again, to kick us off. 
Thanks, Joe. Great. Angie, great, great job. Again, great, great job to everybody. So uh, I, I wanted to make a, a special toast tonight. You know, we, we've made it through the graduation. Uh, we've all kind of still thinking about what, what would have been, you know, at Jetsy 20. So I want to make a toast tonight to first the class for making it through for your graduate to the graduation. But I also want to make a special toast since this is a leader development program. I want to make a special toast to the individual who was leading the society through the year that you were going through this course, who would have been on the stage thanking you, congratulating you, and he's going to do that later. But I also want to congratulate and thank our 100th president, uh, Colonel Buddy Barnes, who was the leader of our society through your year, while I also congratulate you. So to Buddy and to the class, Thank you for capping off the first century of our society and getting us started on the right foot for our second century. To the class and the buddy. You're here. Can I go get it? Go ahead, Angie. Yep, you guys can just go. Yeah, okay, order. thank you. All right, so I think it's really fitting that our first LDP class is graduating in 2020 because this is when we're entering our second century. And this very accomplished class gives me great optimism about the future of our society. I read all of the bios and was just really, really amazed. To quote the French poet and Nobel Prize winner Anatole France, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream not only plan, but also believe. So I would like to propose a toast to the inaugural LDP class, the class of 2020. Thank you for acting on your dreams and for planning for what you believe our great society can become. The class. Here, here. Here, here. All right, buddy, you're up. As the 100th president, I'm, I was fortunate to share this special year with a very special group of young SAME leaders, the LDP class of 2020. During my presidential travels, I was able to spend time with many of you at posts and regions and at camps. Separation by state boundaries, by oceans, by time zones, or presented with a pandemic or deployments, for the class of 2020, your resilience will be long remembered. It was an honor sharing this 100th SAME year with you. And all, please raise your glass to this great group of young leaders, the future of SAME. Here, here. Of SAME. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, buddy. John Mogi here. Um, inaugural president of the SME Foundation. And I, first of all, I want to thank Caroline, Mike, Eddie, Angie, and Susan. Um, a special thanks to all of you for making this program real and providing credibility to your SAME Foundation. So without this class as proof, that your, that your foundation is willing to invest in our future leaders and show that as demonstration to our potential donors and contributors to the foundation, it, it, none of this would be possible. So to the class, the inaugural class of the SAMA Leadership Development Program for making your foundation credible. To the class. Here, here. To the class. Here, here. Cheers. Okay, um, I would like to propose a toast um, to General Schrodel and to Mr. Mike Darrow. Um, prior to, uh, to the LDP, I had actually never met Mike. How strange is that? Um, but to Joe and his vision um, for pairing the right people together, um, I think you nailed it. I could not have a better partner in crime than Mr. Mike Darrow. So thank you, Joe, for uh, putting that match together. And thank you, Mike, for being such a great partner. 
Um, and then also to the graduating class, um, here's to you leveraging the knowledge that you've learned about yourself over the last year to lead, inspire, and improve the world. Thank you. To the class. To the class. To the class. Mike, you're up. Sorry about that. I got double muted by Eddie. But that, I, as I said, I've uh, <laughs> I probably talked more than I normally do in a, in a day. So my toast is the short and sweet. It's the class of 2020 to what you have learned, to what you will share, what you will do for the society. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. there Charlie yes can you hear me yep okay all right I'm Charlie Hart and I served as a mentor to Craig Bryant but today I'm representing all the mentors so on behalf of all the mentors here is a toast to the inaugural leader development program class poet and author of my people will forget people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made that so your LDP class conveyed a number of feelings to us. First of all, we were inspired by the accomplishments that led to your selection to the LDP. We really got excited about your ongoing activities and we're very confident now that the future is in your capable hands. Uh, we're especially amazed that in spite of all the obstacles, this class remained engaged and involved throughout the program. And whether you're working from your busy office on site with a project, teleworking, juggling family matters from home, or whether you're deployed to remote locations executing military missions, this entire class was fully engaged and committed to the success of this experience and to the, your development and to SEME overall. And that really speaks to the commitment of all the inaugural class members. So on behalf of all mentors, I'd like to propose a toast to the leader development class of 2019 and 2020. Cheers. Yeah, the class. To the class. Jackie, you're next. Am I on? <laughs> yes, you're on. Okay, great. Uh, on behalf of uh, the RVPs of SAME, I want to make this toast and say, here is to your class projects the executions to engage the posts, energize the members to serve on these opportunities that's going to foster the life force of the society. Inspire, honor the patriotism that we share as an SAME community and actively lead with innovation and light the fire for volunteers to carry out the strategic plan. This is the most amazing program I am so honored to be here with all of you today. Here is to the entire program, everyone that mentored and it helped. Congratulations, Leader Development Program, Class of 2020, salute. The class. The class. The class. So that's our last official toast. Yay, Eddie, we got through all the slides. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Well no more videos. <laughs> you can take Eddie, you can chug yours now if you want. Because now we're good. Um, so uh anybody else who you know has anything to say, would like to say anything? Um, kind of open mic, I see. Oh, Roland. Look, 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 somebody messaged me. Roland. Yay. Okay, Roland, you're up. All right, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, um, trying to see if I can turn my camera on. Did I do it? Not yet. Oh yeah, you did. I see. All right, uh, I wanna propose a toast to uh, celebrate this class's resilience, uh, their ability to persevere through uh, a global pandemic and be flexible and uh, still take care of uh, business and, and uh, do everything that needs to be done. 
Uh, that's their superpower. You saw Melissa's superpower in the video, but uh, they all shared that. And so I want to raise a glass and recognize that. Cheers. 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 I'm watching the chat. Or if nobody's betting, you could just turn on. Let's see. Or we can give everybody 15 minutes of free time on a Friday. <laughs> we can do that as well. Any other words of wisdom, words of thanks? This has been so much fun. Oh, Jennifer, yay. OK. Jennifer Campbell, our awesome facilitator. Hi there, you guys. I, I just oh, wanted to let you know. Sorry, my five year old's here. I just wanted to let you know how delighted it was I was to get to know you at your very first session and be part of that know yourself process, which is so huge for leaders. And as I've gotten to see the reflection from the last year, just like this is happening right now, there <laughs> question whether or not you have the goods to make this happen and having seen what all of you have done over the last year just remember you do if you ever doubt yourself and what you've got if you've got the stuff to make whatever vision happen that you're excited about making happen just know that that's the mark of a really great leader to have that kind of doubt to invite you know that imposter syndrome from time to time that probably means you're on track, but I've seen the goods that you've brought. You're amazing. And I really look forward to staying in touch with you over, over the years, I hope. So congratulations. You put in a lot of work over the last year and it shows. Cheers. 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 Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try something hard here. Here's what we want everybody to do. We want everybody except for the people who are graduating to turn off your cameras and everybody in the graduating class to turn on your cameras. So we can get a picture. We're gonna see if this will work. So let me turn my camera off. Let's see. It's hard to make. I can't hey, hard to Eddie, make. can you can you stop sharing the screen so their faces oh, that's are a good, a little bigger? That's a good idea. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Okay. So if you're not in the graduating class, you should turn your camera off. Thank you. Is that it? Patrick, I still see you. <laughs> okay, there you go. There's your there's your photo up. So like countdown. Who's taking a picture? I guess I should take a picture. I'll get my. I'm taking a picture. Hold on. Okay, everybody smile. Well, I'm putting One, right. two, three. Assuming everybody's there. Cheese. Okay, I got a picture. This is a very odd thing. Okay, good. All right, anybody else can turn back on. <laughs> okay now i'm like now i'm back over to look at see the closed screen good i did that turn the slides off got it okay all right good that was cool um anybody have anything else um i will say that here's what i i'll say what i shared yesterday at the foundation board meeting we had to give an update on you know where we were at and uh, so I said the graduation was today. And what I said, like everything y'all are doing, you know, with the with the uh, the projects and what you're gonna do for the future of the society is it's awesome. I mean, everything Patrick talked about, really, really good stuff. But what I think is super cool is that you know there's 17 of you, there's 18 of you next year. That means there's also you know 36 mentors. Then there's you know 30, 40 of us helping. I mean, there's there's a hundred, hundred and whatever that are somehow involved in this. And uh, I just think it's really cool how when like with everything you guys are going to do and like the personal growth and the personal development like you know this all trickles down into like your kids and your marriages and your workplaces like that the tentacles are just huge and so like what an investment i see in just um you know bettering people's lives not just bettering fame right but bettering like your lives and our country and so that's what i shared with the foundation yesterday that it was a very good investment in my opinion. So. Angie, we have one more uh, toast requests from no Aaron. Good. Go for it, Erin. All right. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, just wanted to just take an opportunity to, to thank everyone, uh, the classmates, um, 
you guys are great. Um, the, the task force and SAME in general, um, everyone has been wonderful. And uh, I'd like to, I guess, cheers for uh, the class of 2021. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. The class. Well done. Big shoes. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> and maybe just a tad bit competitive. So, we will see. Someday you'll have to share the all the WhatsApp stuff you've said about all of us. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, that's true. I probably, we, don't, we don't want to know. What goes on WhatsApp stays on WhatsApp? Totally. I think so. Who do I know? Who do I know? It's mainly about Craig and Ben. No, oh, okay. That's oh, what that makes sense. <laughs> that that yeah. sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. That was definitely a pre-COVID shot. The, oh yeah, look at all those hands. Oh my gosh, and no sanitizer yep. to be seen. We all miss it. Good old days. <laughs> and no face masks. Ugh. Yeah. It's just a preview That's of uh, Jetson Court. Someday. It's just taunting us. It is. Portland. Lots of hugs, lots of hugs in Portland. I need a Jimmy hug. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's Jimmy with with his uh camera? Where's Jimmy with your mask and camera? We got to show a picture of you. <laughs> oh, oh, 2021 in the house. Woohoo. Pete, would you like to say uh, something we... on behalf of the 2021 class? Sure. Yeah, on behalf of the LDP class of 2021, congratulations to the class of 2020 on your great achievement and completion of this fantastic program. I think all of us are getting a lot of value from the current class and, and you guys kind of helping shape that program. So we've been inspired by the work that you um, have produced and we look forward to stepping up to the challenge. Congratulations again. Thank you, Pete. We look forward to like having a fun year with you guys. I know, Pete, because right now the class of 2020 is the best class ever. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and everybody's very competitive. <laughs> Everything's a competition. It's a class of one right now, but they're the best class ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're good. I'm going to give everybody a free 10 minutes. Um, thank, thank you, Angie. Yeah. Thanks, Angie. Thanks, Angie. Great job. Thanks, I just want to say, here's my thanks to the SAME thank Foundation. Um, you know what a cool thing to like spend our spend our money on and be able to talk about. Like like John Moogie said, it's um, very tangible, so that's super cool. And thank you to Mike and Caroline for your vision and your leadership. And just we've had a good time. Um, and then the class for just being like awesome, like way more awesome than we ever expected. So that was super cool. And of course, I have to say, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Eddie because, oh, Lord, we couldn't do anything without him. So we love you, Eddie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and with that, uh, I'll just end it with this. I cannot wait until I'm at a JTC and one of y'all is taking over as national president and says, I was part of the inaugural LDP class. And I'll be like, woo, woo, I was there. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so someday, that's what will happen. I, I would bet money on it and um, can't wait to see it. I'm excited. Anytime. Have a great weekend. Have a great Friday. Drive safe. Somebody's driving. All that good stuff. And uh, thanks for doing this virtual experiment. Thanks, Angie. Well thanks, done. Everybody. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. All right. Thanks see you all in class. Bye. Bye.